And I, I told my parents, I want to be like that. I want to get inside the TV and be like Zorro. And, you know, you can't escape your destiny. It, it happened. I worked a lot from the age of five to, uh, well, on. But when we did Lost in Space, the pilot, I was 10. So I'd worked half of my life, and <laughs> there I was working with Zorro. Hi, I'm Rob Word. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. Today, we're going to talk about Westerns from a child's point of view. Sometimes you'll see big shows with little people in them. No, I'm not talking about the terror of Tiny Town. I'm talking about having Will Robinson. They did do an episode of Lost in Space as a Western, but Billy Moomy did a lot of other Westerns. We're gonna hear about them today. Give him a big hand, Billy Moomy. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Glad you're here. Well, I have to say that uh, Lost in Space actually did do a Western episode. Absolutely. I Doctor was a space cowboy before Steve Miller. <laughs> <laughs> and Zachariah, too, was kind of an oddball. Uh, Indeed he was, uh, dear boy. So uh, Dr. Smith played a uh, doppelanger in that, right? He played yes, the Zemu or, or Zeno Scientology. Z I don't know what it was. <laughs> yes, uh, Jonathan was incredible. You know, what a, a one of a kind actor, mm -hmm. and he would remind us all of that constantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have that uh, sense of fun about yourself. Oh, we had a great time, and he. He, it was a real treat for him to star in that show. He was a, a theater actor, well-trained, and had cut his teeth, you know, doing regional theater and off-Broadway stuff, and several other television series, The Third Man with Michael Rennie and, uh, you know, The Bill Dana Show. He had, he had been a, very much a working actor, but to, to become the star of a television mm -hmm. series that was, you know, for its time, a, a hit television series, he, he w appreciated every moment of that. And, Jonathan was never unprepared, and he was always holding court on the set, and he was a joy. Mm -hmm. And on that show, too, the former Zorro, did you watch Zorro as a kid? Zorro was the reason why I became an actor at the age of four. Uh, I, I actually worshipped Zorro, and, and I drove everybody in my house crazy playing Zorro and Superman. Uh, you know, it was, also, it was George Reeves and Guy Williams. You had a thing for capes? Yes, oh. both, I did. Both those caped adventurers. And I, I broke my leg playing Zorro. I jumped off of uh, a bed onto one of those clown bops that I thought was the evil Comandante. <laughs> and I landed on a toy Winchester rifle, which in those days were well-made steel toys. And I broke my leg in half. So I had to spend um, several months in a cast and a wheelchair, and I couldn't go out and run around and play, you know, cowboys and Indians with my, my friends. We lived on a cul-de-sac, and at every other house was a kid within a year or two of my age. It was pretty idyllic. But I spent a couple of months basically in a cast, and all I could do was wait for Zorro and Superman on, and Spin and Marty, you know, uh, television all day. And I, I told my parents, I want to be like that. I want to get inside the TV and be like Zorro. And, you know, you can't escape your destiny. It, it happened. I worked a lot from the age of five to, uh, well, on. But when we did Lost in Space, the pilot, I was 10. So I'd worked half of my life, and <laughs> there I was working with Zorro. And, and Guy was a wonderful dynamic, incredibly handsome, incredibly smart, well-educated man. And uh, he taught me how to fence. Mm -hmm. Happened to be a laser sword, but <laughs> uh, yeah, he was terrific. And oh, that was a real thrill for me. Yeah. Well, I was watching an episode of The Virginian, and I think it's so wonderful now that all of these classic shows that we grew up with are being rerun again. There's multiple channels out there, hundreds of channels, and I'm thrilled that uh, Gunsmoke and The Virginian and Have Gun Will Travel and just so many are being rerun. And looks like, except for a lot of the universal ones, have been properly restored. So the prints are good. Yeah. And you did uh, a Virginian with French hot tone. I did. Uh, I did a lot of westerns. I mean, not as many as some of your other guests, but I did do quite a, quite a lot of them. And that was a really good show. I saw that not too long mm -hmm. ago having, you know, when you, when, 
Things like Lost in Space or The Twilight Zone, certain things, they've never kind of stopped running, so they've stayed very much in, in the frame of your memory. Things that are 50-some years old that haven't been on the air or that I missed if they were on the air that I haven't seen for a half a century, when you see them again, it's very fresh. You can see it objectively and kind of like, oh, wow, that was, boy, the, the beats on that show really clicked well and everybody was really cool. And I remembered... Um, my dad was a cattle rancher, and uh, he owned a ranch in Bishop, California, and I had horses when I was very young, and, and whenever I would do a Western, my dad would come on locations with me. Whenever I was on the studio lots, my mom would come with me. But when we did Westerns, my dad would come, and he'd sit off camera, and he'd whittle. He'd sit and whittle me cool things while I was working. Um, but uh, Randy Boone, who was an actor on The Virginian, I had just started playing the guitar, and he was a guitar player, and I remember he taught me uh, the chords uh, to Scotch and Soda, the Kingston Trio song, which is a pretty jazzy song. It's a, you know, it's not that hard to play, but it's, it's a mature progression. And Randy taught me that song on that episode, and uh, that's one of my, my fondest <laughs> memories of that show. Well, yeah, I did see it recently, and I thought it was pretty Who good. was on that? Of course, Jim Drury, but... Uh, sure. But Doug McClure was just so charming and such a big star at Universal. They put him in a lot of different shows, and I, I think even in the Virginian and all the other Universal shows, guest stars from all over would pop up in those in the Virginian, more like a movie. That's why they had the ninety-minute uh, shows, Chateau. very well directed and produced. You know, I did a lot of those shows that nobody remembers, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't remember a lot of them. Sure. Sometimes someone on you know Facebook or the internet will pop up some little couple of scenes from a show that I haven't seen in close to sixty years, and I'll go, oh, I forgot. Him. Oh, Have Gun will travel, right? I forgot about that. Well, here's one. How about Wide Country with Andy Prine and Earl Holloman? Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed Wide Country, and Andy Prine was a, was a was very easy to hang out with. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. You mustn't expect too much, people, David. You mean my pa? For what? My pa's a champion. With Steve Forrest, it was an episode where uh, Steve, I played Steve's son. And uh, he was going blind. He was a rodeo rider who was going blind with Jacqueline Scott. Hold it, Eddie. Royce, I want to talk to you. Ro Royce, I want to talk to you about this thing. Now, wait a minute. Every time I turn around, Guthrie, there you are poking your nose into my business. Get a mad on against the world suddenly, ain't you? Didn't even try to fight back. Some of the other westerns that you did uh, that are obscure like that too. <laughs> Not that doesn't mean they're bad. That just no. means that uh, they're sort of forgotten. Lancer. With Jim Stacy, yeah. I have a real. You want to hear a good Lancer story? That's why you're here. Okay, I'll. T I'll this well, it's not. It's not necessarily good, but uh, it's. But it's true. Okay, those um, are the best kind. I, when I did the Lancer, I had uh, finished Lost in Space and then just wrapped up uh, starring in a Disney film called Rascal, and I was kind of at the top of my game, so to speak. So, uh, I came on to do this episode of, of Lancer called The Kid. And, and um, you are the kid. I'm 15, yeah, I was the kid. And in the, the very first uh, scene that we shot was out on location. I'm supposed to steal Jim Stacy's horse and try to ride off on it. And he <laughs> whistles for his horse, the horse bucks me off, and we spend the next hour getting into trouble. Uh, they asked me, because they knew I was a comfortable and a pretty good rider, and they asked me if I would do the fall, right? And, and I... Your voice raised when well, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Harris, Dr. Smith from Lost in Space, taught me something very important on the series because I always wanted to be the guy to jump off the rock and do the stuff and get too close to the explosions. But Jonathan said to me early on, Billy, never deny a stunt person a check. Mm -hmm. 
right? And I, 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 that resonates with me to this day because sometimes you want to do that, but you realize, hey, if you don't do that, they're having a steak dinner or whatever, and if you, if you tried to do it, they might not do it. So never deny a stunt person a check. So I said, no, I'm not going to fall off the horse. That's what, you know, this guy's here to do. So the stunt person did the stunt, and he broke his neck. Whoa. I know it's not a fun story, but, I mean, he, he recovered. He wasn't paralyzed, but he, they took him out, and he had to go in the ambulance, and, and eventually he was okay. Uh, but <laughs> that was the first day on Lancer. One of the next days on Lancer, there was a scene. Jim Stacy was a very bold guy. He did a great job. I loved his performance, and I hung out with him during the week that we shot. Johnny Madrid. Yeah, Johnny yeah. Madrid, right. There was a scene where he was in a bathtub, right? And when you're in a bathtub, obviously on a television set, you're wearing like some flesh-colored thingies. Well, he was in this bathtub. They were shooting the scene, and a group of nuns came onto the set. <laughs> and he stood up, welcome, sisters! <laughs> and I remember I was there, I was like, whoa! <laughs> like, that's something that you wouldn't see today. <laughs> uh, and there's one more Jim Stacy story, because that was a very memorable week. And I almost shouldn't tell this story, but it's true, and he's gone, and I, and I liked him, and he, he had some bad luck and mm -hmm. ran into some trouble and then came out of it. But <clears throat> he and I went to lunch, just the two of us one day. We went down to Hollywood Boulevard to get some hot dogs, which, I, anyway. <laughs> we came back to the set, and he picked up two hippie girls. We had done this in 1969. He'd picked up these two hippie chicks uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, came back to his trailer, and supposedly they all took acid. <laughs> and he offered me what supposedly was LSD in his trailer, and I was like, no, <laughs> no, we're, no. <laughs> and he was fine, all I can say is he shot the rest of the day, and you would never have thought he was perhaps in an altered state of consciousness. <laughs> but, and I don't know if he was kidding me and he really did or he didn't, but it was pretty weird to go to lunch, come back with a couple of gals and supposedly take acid and then shoot the rest of the day. That was probably the day he stood up out of the bathtub. <laughs> that was the 60s. <laughs> that was you know, the end of the yeah. 60s, and it was a, it was a learning experience for, for me. <laughs> you did an episode of Wagon Train with uh, Art Linkletter and, and Nancy Davis, right? Yes, yeah, right. But also a, a group of other child actors were in that too. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you remember about that? Well, uh, I remember that I, it was a guy who played Beaver's friend. It was Rusty okay. Stevens right. and it was a guy who played Larry Mondello. <laughs> and I was very impressed with that yeah. because I had, you know, I love, who didn't love Leave it to Beaver? He was a couple of years older than me. So working with Larry Mondello was probably cooler to me than working with Art Linkletter. Um, I, but I had a lot of scenes with, with the future Mrs. Reagan, mm -hmm. and uh, she was cool. I worked with her twice, uh, and I saw that show within the last two years, and uh, it was pretty good, you mm -hmm. know? I had, that was one I hadn't seen in 50 years, so, you know, you, you see it kind of objectively. I wore a little derby or something. I, I kind of had that little stymie from the little rascal's hat. <laughs> it was cool. It was, a, it was a good hat. Wonderful memories, and again, that's uh, another universal Lot. Oh, I worked a lot at Universal, yeah. Yeah. Well, besides the Zorro and Superman shows that you watched as a child, were there other Westerns that you remember seeing that, uh, that meant a lot to you? Oh, I was Roy Rogers crazy. To be or not to be, that is the question. It always has been, Pat, to be on the side of justice and the law or to be against everything that's right and honorable. And to be on the wrong side means to end up in jail. I don't know if you'd call Sky King a Western. Oh, yeah. I love, love Sky King. I loved Sky King. Calling XC-101, come in, please. They may be a little roughed up, but they'll be okay. I'll ride herd on them till you get there. I'm practically there now. Nice work, Sky. Thanks, Mitch. Songbird out. 
I loved The Lone Ranger, getting to meet Jay Silverheels and Clayton Moore when I was young at uh, several charity events mm -hmm. and things. That was a big thrill for me. What a gentleman he was. <laughs> Tonto and I aren't bandits. We're your friends. Believe me. Well, then, then why are you wearing that mask? <laughs> why are you wearing that hat? <laughs> I mean, I, that's my era of coming into TV, you know, the late 50s, and oh, I loved so many of those shows. There was a, a very short-lived Disney series, it wasn't typically Western, but it was uh, El Fago Baca. Oh, sure. And I loved that show. Robert Loja. Yeah, I loved that as a kid. I haven't seen that in forever. And I loved Spin and Marty, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Tim Considine, great, yeah. good. David Stollery and Dobie. Yeah, those were great. And The Rifleman, I think Johnny was one of the uh, the finest young actors the industry's ever had the honor to put on screen. You aren't really scared of him, are you? What do you think? Just having people call you best isn't important. But it is to Mr. Calicut. Is that why he didn't want to do it? Yeah, he might have me. But he might not have. I wouldn't have cared if he had. Would you? Maybe not too much, but, but I think it would have mattered to Mr. Calico. I loved Johnny's work in The Rifleman, and I loved his work in other things. We got to work together about 20 years ago, um, but that was a wonderful show. I loved The Rifleman. Yeah. Well, we loved having you here, Billy. Thank you for... Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. here. Yeah, you remember it.